guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics, another edition. We're here with the recap. So I, this is the first time we're like actually doing this. So is it weird to hear me not like screaming the intro? Is that what you're laughing it's, at? Or? I'm laughing because it sounds like you're in a library. <laughs> I'm trying to be respectful. There's other people around. I'm not trying to yell. Uh, I'm still at the garden. But for the regular <laughs> season, <laughs> we're going to be doing videos for every game. But if it is like, let's say the Celtics play on a Saturday, our recap and our reaction to the game will be a part of Sunday's pod. But if they mm-hmm. play on like tomorrow, a... <clears throat> yes, yes. But if they play on a Sunday, like today, since we don't drop podcasts on Monday, we're just going to do videos like this. What are you laughing at, Sam? What? Because you're struggling to think of like an example. <laughs> like today's literally an example. I wasn't struggling to think of an example. I was struggling to think of what day it was, <laughs> which is okay, a recurring fair. problem, a, a recurring problem on the program. Uh, but the Celtics just opened up their preseason against the 76ers. We'll, we'll do a little, little dual screen here. I'll bring up the box score, let you see how everyone did during the game. Um, <clears throat> they earned a win. They got a win in the first preseason game, 106-114. Uh, and let's lead with the person who got them the win, <laughs> Peyton Pritchard, <laughs> fresh off his extension, dropped Absolute 26 dog. points. Two rebounds, four assists, nine of 14 from the field, six 11 from three. I don't think I've heard TD Garden chant MVP in a preseason game before. Uh, and Peyton Pritchard got those chants. The <laughs> people are juiced. I mean, you were there. <laughs> you could hear it on TV. The place was jumping like it was a regular season game that meant something. I, I won't call it a playoff game. I think that's a little bit too too much. But we'll give it a good regular season jolt, right? I think everyone's excited about the new roster. You get to see Porzingis play. got to see Drew Holiday play. But everybody is talking about Peyton Pritchard, like you mentioned, 26 points off the bench in 23 minutes. And he looks like he's going to be able to step into a nice sixth man scoring type role very easily. Because he was out there right away, even in the first half, came out in the first quarter, Three or five from three. Hits a big one. Or maybe he made some at the beginning of the second quarter. I don't know. Hits the buzzer beater three and one at half court. And he just catches fire. This is really great to see. After a guy sat around all season last year watching games, he finally gets an opportunity, gets paid, and is like, okay, I'm just going to go in and dominate. He looked so comfortable with the ball in his hands. And that is such a great sight to see when you have given up a little bit of your guard depth to improve your strength at the top of your roster. Yeah, Pritchard looked like everything you want a backup point guard to be. And the best part about tonight was this feels like a performance he could have had in a regular season game. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, he's going to get these opportunities. Uh, He he might not necessarily get as many opportunities in the regular season, but it's not like he played 30 minutes tonight. Like, he played 23 minutes. You're telling me you don't think Peyton Pritchard could get 23 minutes in a regular season game? This is the type of game that the Celtics want from Peyton Pritchard. This is the reason they signed him to that contract extension. He is going to be, he he might be the seventh best player on their team, legitimately. He might be the seventh best player on their team. Like you're going to need that guard depth. You're going to need that scoring depth because as much as you have six stars all capable of scoring the ball at a high level, having a guy who can come in and hit those shots, who can come in and, and provide that spark and who has, I mean, just, maybe more confidence than anybody else on the floor, right? Like you Pritchard was not hesitating. The first he got in there, just chucked a three. Like he got in there first. Like he's just like, no, I'm shooting everything I got. And he's like 30 million dollars, 30 million threes. <laughs> he's chucking. So yeah, I, I think that confidence is a huge thing too, which good for Pritchard. He, he's great. That is a big thing though, to your point, like <clears throat> let him yeah. shoot. That's what they want him to do. That's part of the reason why Brad Stevens probably made these moves this summer. He's like, well, we have Pritchard and he's just found money. He's somebody that wasn't even playing last year. He comes out the first preseason game, scores a team high 26, takes the most shot on the team. Still has four assists. He only turned the ball over a couple times, and he looked really, really confident. That's huge. For a guy that's going to be now making seven and a half million a year, is that, that's less than the MLE, right? The MLE, if I could speak. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, the uh, full MLE is actually a lot. I can double check. Spot, Spot track has them all listed. Um, the full MLE is like, 
twelve million. Like, like it's it's significantly less uh, than the max. The non taxpayer Emily is twelve point four. The taxpayer Emily is five. So it's it's less than a non taxpayer, but it is more than the uh, the mid level of a tax paying team. Not bad. So, not bad. Not at all. Not at all. Also not bad. Not Porzingis ruled. Came out <laughs> dominated. Great. He he was insane. Everything he did was a highlight. First play of the game, he gets a look at three. Quick trigger, quick release. Doesn't even hit the rim, goes right through. Then gets the ball in the mid post, makes Daniel House fall on his ass, throws down a two-handed dunk with ease. Then pick and roll with Derek White, catches a one-handed lob like he's Robert Williams and dunks over two or three Sixers. It was insane. Right out of the gates of yeah. Porzingis. He had a block. He had a couple of nice passes too. And he just looked like he fit and was so comfortable playing a sometimes big, sometimes small role. He doesn't need the ball a whole lot to be effective. Awesome. Yeah, no, Porzingis was just just dominant. Like he he only had 17 points, but this is what I was talking about when we were, we, we asked the question in the last pod. We were like, who do you think is going to be more? And maybe just in the pregame. <clears throat> Who's going to be more impactful, Drew or or Kristaps Porzingis? And I, I think Drew is better for like the tone setting. But like I said it on the pregame, and it showed up in the game. Porzingis is going to completely change the way the Celtics play. He he allows them to be so much more open, so much like play so much freer, uh, or more free, whatever the phrasing is. And, and somebody asked him after the game about um his two man game with Jason Tatum and he just goes like dude it's so easy like he goes those guys are so talented and Jason draws so much attention that it opens things up for me like he's just free to kind of do whatever the hell he wants like he, he so the first question Abby Jin asked him like you know you get that first three to start the game what are you thinking like was that part was that part of the game plan he goes no I was supposed to stand in the corner <laughs> he starts laughing <laughs> he's just like I was just he's doing whatever he wants and I, you can just tell that he is so in love with being in Boston too. Like I, I asked him after the game, I was like, that was your first experience playing in TD garden as a Celtic. And I know it was just the preseason, but it was like, it, he just starts laughing. He's like, dude, that was insane. Like, that, that was nuts. Uh, and he, you can just tell that like, you could see it at media day. You could see it after the presser. He is so, so <laughs> pumped to be a Celtic and it's super fun. And he's great. Yeah. Follow up should have been, do you feel like a rescue puppy? <laughs> No, that wasn't the follow up. I did have a follow up, but the follow up was a bit more niche, so we don't necessarily have to go in depth on this on the pod. But sure, um, read Jack's article. Yeah, I'll, I'll write about it later this week. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. He's pumped to be there, and it's it's solely because he's just never played anywhere where he's able to just fit and be good. Looks mm-hmm. like he's comfortable. Not comfortable. Yeah. Tatum kind of sucked. No. Classic October, Tatum was November, great... Tatum. Mm. Yeah. I will say, like, as much as he didn't shoot the ball well, like, you could see him still being effective, and you could see he was going through the right motions, if that makes sense. Like, he, it's not like he shot a million threes, which is a good thing. Like, he took four yeah. threes and he missed a ball, but, like, he was getting down in the paint. He was driving to the rim. He was posting up. He was doing a lot of things you wanted him to do. And because of that, he got nine free throws and made seven of them, right? And, and he got 10 rebounds and he got five assists. Like, he was playing the right way, at least, and especially he was playing the right way, according to Sam, which I assume you can appreciate, True. even though the shot didn't fall. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. actually funny that you mentioned that, because I was like, damn, he sucks. Like, I texted you that he sucks. And I was watching <laughs> the game. And there was a couple possessions where he was at the top of the key, and I was like, well, now we're going to see some step backs. And instead of taking same. step back threes, he drove and got to the free throw line. Awesome. Great job. Great, great adjustment. New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. I wonder if having two more high-level offensive weapons and Drew and Kristaps will make him feel less of a need to chuck those threes in, in some weird way. Does that make sense? Like, not, not you that you should be doing that it last year in the first no, place. No, I'm not, I'm not, like, being a dick. I'm. You should bank that and literally ask him sometime. Yeah. Have you, have you felt that having the extra help makes it so you have to force less? 
you have time to work on it. Not going back for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> that's an that's an interesting piece though. Um, Tatum was fine, didn't shoot the ball well, but he did things well. Jalen Brown looked all right. Nineteen points, three rebounds, shot it very efficient. Seven to ten, one of two. It, it was pretty quiet in my Good opinion. Nineteen for Jalen Brown, but <clears throat> yes, yes, he was. He was I thought the way that these guys got their shots was kind of interesting. Like like we just mm-hmm. mentioned, yeah. Jalen, 19 points, majority of them in transition. He didn't have to get the ball a lot in the half court. You may have to see a lot of that for all of these guys to get their looks because you had Tatum, 13, Brown, 10, Porzingis, only seven shots. Drew Holiday, 10 off the bench, and Pritchard had 14, which won't happen in a real game probably. Um, But I love Jalen in transition. He's fast. He's athletic. He can finish with authority. It doesn't really matter. I didn't love him in the half court. He didn't look super comfortable with the ball. I think everybody kind of saw that yeah. on Twitter and was, you know, commenting on it. But well, I don't think many people were comfortable in the half court outside of Porzingis. Like it looked like the Jays. Yeah, they all saw. Kind of like, I was like, sure damn, these guys that they brought back, terrible. They should have cleaned out the whole roster instead of just the, the I feel like that'll uh outskirts. I feel like that'll come with playing more together, though, and getting comfortable. Like <clears throat> Drew Holiday, two of four from three, but two of ten overall, so shot over six from the field. The Celtics smoked a lot of layups tonight. They just were missing at the rim a lot, which was something we saw a lot in the postseason. And I wonder how much of that is just first game jitters versus not knowing where everybody likes to be on the court, like not knowing the spots. Like you're going to see some growing pains with this team. Luckily, they have the talent to fight through that growing, those growing pains. And I think you saw that a lot, especially with Porzingis. But, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of building that chemistry, especially in the half court, like you mentioned. Also, not for nothing, they were down, what, 13, 14 points early? And they came back? Yeah. Like, very quick. Shout out, Pritchard. Albeit, they weren't playing against Embiid or Harden. They were playing against the fellas. But still, they sure. were able to quickly battle back, didn't let anything get out of hand, and they overtook the Sixers in, what, four or five minutes, if that, after the first quarter? Yeah. yeah. Also, One based on this box lead. score, yeah, I'm not saying this is going to happen throughout the regular season. I would not be surprised if Tatum leads the team in rebounds and maybe even assists, getting close to there in assists. Like, I, like he is going to be the focal point, and I think you'd see him take a step back in the scoring department. But I think he does a lot of everything else, and he's going to do it well. <clears throat> so, uh, I think but, that's but what's going to separate him from from other stars in the league, because <laughs> yeah, we talked about this. We're kind of seeing it just by looking at the shot distribution. You're not going to see a lot of mega games where they're just taking every shot, the stars. You're going to see them have to impact yeah. the game in other ways as they are unselfishly playing offense to, to help the team work as a machine instead of a bunch of different, we'll say, horses pulling in different directions, you know, essentially quartering the game. If you're familiar with yeah. torture methods. <laughs> You're the worst. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, I think we'll see how it uh, pans out. But I think Tatum takes a less of a scoring load. And hit, but he does everything else so well that I think he'll be fine. Going over the rest of the roster quick, Luke Cornett was fine. Some people roasted him on Twitter. Bobby people not, not pleased with Luke Cornett. <laughs> he was fine. Um, Delano Banton was also fine. Made a three, which was nice to see. But he he's you can tell how long he is in athletic, especially on the defensive end. I think that's intriguing. Um, Sam Hauser just couldn't find a shot. Sam Hauser might be washed. Tough. Tough. Uh, O'Shea Brissett, though, just decided to try to kill somebody. <laughs> that was, that well, was here, here's what I said about that. Mm. It's really unfortunate for David Duke, who went to PC, that the mm-hmm. Sixers were in the bonus because he had to go shoot free throws. And I would have never <laughs> known that was David Duke who got murdered by O'Shea Brissett unless he had to shoot the free throws. That was an yep. insane putback. That was prime Blake Griffin over Pau Gasol esque of a putback, mm-hmm. and unfortunately it was yeah. an, uh, over the back loose ball foul. But my goodness, O'Shea was, Brissett uh, looked really good. That was a that was very... second putback attempt. One of them was just a layup. Good, mm-hmm. good game from him. I was impressed. I was very happy with my tweet about it too. I said Joe Mazzulla lost the challenge, but that's an ultimate homie move. Tried to get O'Shea Brissett's highlight. Sure on the is. Board. <laughs> There's a minute 30 left in a preseason game. Joe was, was like, challenge that shit. We want the If highlight. I had to bet on one of the coaches to challenge, would have been Nick Nurse, not Joe Mazzula. Yep. yep, I agree. Um, Lamar Stevens had a putback of his own. Lamar Stevens looked fine Super in his cool. minutes. He didn't play much, but he looked like impactful. Um, something I've gone to didn't ask, play that much. I think we'll see him play more tomorrow because it's a back to back. And 
something I'm going to ask in practice if Joe Mazzulla is there. Lamar Stevens was playing the five um, <clears throat> when he got in the game. He was guarding Philip Pretrishev. I wonder, especially with Horford missing games, likely like on back-to-backs and stuff, and Porzingis maybe getting load management uh, or whatever treatment, I wonder how much they look to Lamar to replace that specific niche of what Grant Williams did in terms of like guarding those bigger guys. And <clears throat> as great as Luke Cornett is in the post, like, having Lamar Stevens as a big body, if he's comfortable guarding some of those big guys, like that's a really intriguing like thing that you could see because it, it was a very small sample size tonight, obviously, but he like, he did guard the center. Like He, he was out there yeah. and he was on the center. So <clears throat> I think that's I, I hope that means he's going to be on the team because even in five minutes, yeah. he impressed me. He was hustling. He had the put back dunk, had the game ceiling basket kind of after Pritchard hit the dagger. He had the like double dagger. Yes. The mini. And- you like Mitty's? Yeah. I just I thought he was aggressive. Like I like Lamar Stevens. I like what I saw in five minutes. Give him more minutes tomorrow against the Knicks. I'd like to see some more, please. I agree. And then uh, quickly, just looking at the Sixers, anything of note here? Maxi was great. Maxie. Beverly was annoying. Jaden Jaden Springer turned into like an actual player. He was, <laughs> he was really really good, good in this game. <laughs> he was impactful on dunk. both ends of the floor. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I got nothing else over here. Mo Bamba missed the dunk. <laughs> Mo Bamba <laughs> got forgot here. he was on this team. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, I think that covers it. Anything I missed? Anything you wanted to go over from this preseason game before we jump on out of here? No, I think I think we got it. I, I think we got a little glimpse of what Joe's going to do with his bench rotations. The guys he trusts, yes. Hauser, Pritchard, Cornette, because they played for him last year. And then Brissett and was Brissette. the only other bench guy that got minutes in the first half. Yep. So there's that. And uh, the last thing I'll say before we get out. TD Garden is so unbelievably excited for this season. <laughs> like, it was so loud in here tonight. Like you can just, you can just tell that on the night of another <laughs> horrific Patriots loss, the whole city. Ah, who just, cares? No, no. But my point is like, this is like everyone like needs the Celtics. Like everyone is looking like. This is maybe the most, as much as last year, the past few years, like they've been great. Like this might be the most attention that will have been on the Celtics in since 2008. Good for us. So, <clears throat> yeah. Subscribe. Be careful. It means uh, a lot of idiots <laughs> out there talking, yeah. saying what they think. Heads up. But, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> thank y'all for tuning in to about them Celtics. We've had an influx of you guys joined over the past few weeks, obviously. Tune in. Well, you know, we'll be breaking this down and maybe it'll be more fun in the regular season, but we've got plenty of stuff regardless and we find stuff to talk about. So thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Check us out on Playback. We're going to be streaming the game tonight as you're hearing this. And uh, yeah, I'll let Sam uh, take it out. Hey, yes. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the preseason debut. We did. Jack was there. You can follow us here by subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any daily uploads or any breakers that happen. We had a couple of those come out this week. You also have uh, Spotify and Apple for the full link pods. One will be dropping tomorrow morning when you're hearing this. So you can follow us and leave a five star on those platforms. You can also find us on social media. That's at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook page, just name of the pod. You can find Jack at Jack's Money NBA on Twitter. He's all over the place. He's posting from practice games. So you're going to get a lot of great coverage from him. And you can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA, and I'm tweeting from my couch. But I I have things to say. So that's it for us. Bye. Taco. Come on. Taco's, Taco. Taco's having some fun here. That is bogus. These guys are ridiculous. 